On the CASP exam, there's kind of a list of mobile technology concerns that you need to be aware of that are part of the objectives. So I'm gonna kind of run these down one at a time just to make sure that you understand them. The push notification service was actually created by Apple and its function is to forward notifications of third-party apps to Apple devices. These could be custom text alerts, they could be special sounds, they could be badges. There's actually a bunch of popular mobile push notification services. Typically, they all work with Android and iOS and Windows Phone, as well as Blackberries. It's important to make sure that push notifications are permission-based and that they're targeted. This way, you're securely pushing personalized content to users. One of the most popular is Urban Airship. It's an app messaging platform that offers mobile segmentation, analytics and reports, rich media pages, and behavioral-based engagement strategies. Another concern is to make sure that your instant messaging applications are encrypted. Also, tokenization. Tokenization is a key aspect of mobility security when using things like Apple Pay or Visa Checkout or Google Wallet. A lot of these mobile payment initiatives are built on near-field communication, NFC. And so tokenization is an extra layer of security, a complementary layer of security on top of a complete payment software package, basically lowering the value of sensitive data stored on mobile devices and being transmitted during payment. So you're replacing, let's say, the 16-digit card number and expiration date with a virtually substituted credential. So you're limiting the impact of a data breach or occasional card theft. Some companies that are heavily involved in development, implementation of tokenization would be Visa, uh, Simply Tap, T-A-P-P, and Sequent. OEM to carrier fragmentation occurs most often when mobile users are running older versions of the OS and then some other users have newer versions. This fragmentation is often made worse when the wireless carrier, not the manufacturer, is the one responsible for determining when to deploy operating system updates. This is a problem for software developers who have to have different versions of an application to make sure it works on different versions of an operating system. For example, the several versions of the iOS that are out there right now. Also in your organization, let's say for example, at Brio, it can be a problem for us because we have different operating systems on our provisioned and onboarded phones and pads that have different capabilities. So it's much more difficult for us to manage and secure those devices. Typically, mobile device fragmentation is found more often with Android, not so much with iOS. And that's good news for Brio because we use pretty much iOS. Now, personally, I will use tethering with my iPhone. However, we don't like to do it within our organization at Brio or for our customers because the process of tethering where you, where you use your cell phone or some other mobile device that's on the internet as basically the modem or router for a laptop or maybe a Wi-Fi only tablet does introduce some benefits. And actually, it may be more secure web surfing because as a tethered cell phone, since the information is sent directly through the phone as opposed to over a public open wireless hotspot, may be a recommended solution for those mobile users out there that are remotely working from Brio's central office. However, uh, one of the problems we run into with our employees here at Brio and some of our customers is just how quickly it drains the batteries especially if we're using Bluetooth to connect our phone and our laptop. And also performance issues, okay? A tethered device is typically not as fast as you would expect with other solutions. But the biggest obstacle that our customers are running into is being able to, to tether the cell phone to the laptop at all. Because each wireless carrier, well, you know, I use AT&T, but there's T-Mobile and Verizon and Sprint. Each one of these has different rules and service plans for how they allow the tethering process. And so each cell phone could have its own restrictions and limitations. Next, we have spectrum management, which is basically the regulation of the 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz bandwidth that we use for wireless communication, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And it really depends upon where you are as to what type of management is going to happen. 
most countries will consider the RF spectrum as their property, the state's property, like a national resource, for example. And the whole goal of spectrum management is to mitigate what we call spectrum pollution and maximize the usable spectrum. And the ITU is heavily involved in this. So at Brio, we want to be concerned with some of the issues that are constantly present as it relates to spectrum management, which is broadcast interference, understanding the government and research usage, uh, you know, airports, for example, defense, public safety, knowing what commercial services are available to the public and, you know, the new initiatives, for example, like Verizon's Cat M1 technology and other new emerging satellite technologies for the Internet of Things and usage for industrial, scientific and medical services, remote control usage. So this should all be part of our technological concern. Also, we have the Bluetooth 3.0 versus 4.1 issue. Now, it's interesting that CompTIA wants us to know the difference between 3.0 and 4.1 when actually we have the introduction of Bluetooth 5.0, but they don't mention that. So the most common question that comes up is the differences between 3.0 and 4.1. So basically 3.0 is high speed. It's faster than 2.0. A lot of wireless headphones use 3.0. Smartphones can adjust to operate at minimum power levels if necessary. 4.1 is what's called Bluetooth low energy. So those Bluetooth headphones will go longer, okay? They allow your smart devices and smart components to be connected for longer periods of time without draining batteries. Also, older versions of Bluetooth would interfere with things like 4G LTE, but 4.1 doesn't do that. What's interesting is 4.2 is featured in the iPhone 6, and I just got an iPhone 8, so really Bluetooth 5 you should be aware of. So here at Brio, we're concerned with Bluetooth 5.0, which is the fastest iteration, two times the speed, four times the range, improved interoperability and coexistence with other wireless technologies, continuing the advance of the IoT experience. So we're mentioning here 3.0 versus 4.1 for the sake of the exam, but in a real world environment, we need to be aware of, as we are at Brio, Bluetooth 5.0 and its support for IoT. Some other concerns, uh, unauthorized domain bridging. There are systems in place that provide methods for improving security of our networks by automatically preventing unauthorized bridging. This would be a mobile and wireless device solution. The best solution here is to use the most recent iterations of 802.1x, an extensible authentication protocol with EAP TLS. Augmented reality, really another term for virtual reality. And we know that we have, you know, VR goggles and augmented reality we can get through our iPhones and our Androids. But I'd say one of the areas where the augmented reality really would come into play. So for example, at Brio, if we're gonna do any consulting in the healthcare, area or the healthcare space, the augmented reality to provide medical solutions to remote patients is a huge area. And they expect by 2023 for this to be a huge space. We think about it simply, you know, from a entertainment standpoint. And when it gets right down to it, if we think about entertainment, there is a difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. Augmented reality is where virtual objects are imposed on the real world. And the most common example of that is Pokemon Go, right? But just recently, and I don't know if you remember this, but Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook took a virtual trip to Puerto Rico and he kind of used augmented reality to impose himself and an avatar of himself over the devastation in Puerto Rico and, you know, gave a, a fist pump to people watching that and it really there was a huge backlash. So I guess when we look at these concerns, we want to think about from a security standpoint, all the pros and cons of VR and augmented reality, and especially when they start to lead to productivity problems and productivity hits in our own organizations. Speaking of non-productive, uh, instant messaging, SMS to our phones, to our pads, it's another thing that really can be a security issue with smishing, which is phishing through SMS and texting. There's also spam that comes through SMS and instant messenger. And of course, we have to think about data loss and data leakage. 
and just the hit to productivity of our workers in our organization spending too much time doing these kinds of activities. We know that USB is a physical threat and we need to have an AUP for how you use USB keys and fobs in the organization, bringing them in and taking them out. We also have solutions that we can use to lock down the USB ports on workstations and laptops and do auditing and monitoring. And of course, just the proliferation of mobile malware on our Android devices, on the Windows phones, on Blackberries, and of course, in the iOS. Five recent threats to mobile security, we want to know these. The persistent enterprise class spyware that's showing up on mobile devices, mobile botnets, for example, Ghost Push and Ace Deceiver, two popular ones in 2017, ad fraud and click fraud, the Internet of Things, which is a threat, okay, uh, when everything's on the Internet with an IPv6 address, it's going to keep us busy as security practitioners. And then dead apps. The Blueborn Bluetooth attack is recent. 2017, it can spread without the victim doing anything or even noticing it. And actually, more than 5.3 billion devices with Bluetooth signals are at risk as I do this training in the fall of 2017. Okay, I have an account with Zoho.com. It's actually one of my web mails, but Zoho has a ton of other features and components and tools, just like Google does, just like other vendors. Uh, Zoho has the MDM Plus, the mobile device manager. As you can see in here, I have not enrolled any devices, but you can see I could use this tool as an MDM to either personally for all of my home devices or for my small to medium sized business to show my enrolled devices, inactive devices, ones that have enrollment pending, enrolled users, and installed blacklisted apps. Also with a dashboard here to show different types of devices based on smartphone, tablet, laptop, or desktop, platform summary, uh, no Blackberry here, just iOS, Android, and Windows a BYOD summary, recent activity, and an app summary. So a very inexpensive MDM that you can get through Zoho, which has a ton of tools. So basically you would just, you know, step one, enroll your devices. Step two, you would configure policy settings. Like you would, you would group up your users based on their department or their role or their hierarchy. You can see here I can enroll three different categories of devices. I've also got DEP, Apple enrollment over here, different tools for different platforms. Okay, let's go on down here. So I can group my users based on a hierarchy or their role or department. I can set policies for them. I can sync their email and their contacts. I can lock their devices to a single set of apps. I can use kiosk mode. I can even restrict on those devices using MDM, their camera access, their web content, their VPN. Uh, whatever my policy is. After I do that, after I configure the policy settings, let's say for my iOS devices, let me click on that, I would distribute and manage the apps. Okay, I would push enterprise or third-party applications to the users. I would purchase productivity apps in bulk for iOS and Android for my corporate users and then manage the app licenses. And then finally, of course, monitor devices regularly using my dashboard. I can remotely wipe locate and lock lost devices. I can blacklist unapproved apps. I can alert users to remove them. I can audit device and app compliance and finally generate detailed reports to get better insight and better visibility. You can see I've got the reports area up here. So I've got predefined reports, apps by devices, blacklisted, devices by model, devices by enrollment time, inactive devices, and then other security reports for rooted devices, devices according to their storage encryption, jailbroken devices, devices by the passcode type, and devices backed up in the cloud. That's Mobile Device Manager Plus we're looking at from Zoho, Z-O-H-O. Here's some resources I want you to get uh, from NIST. I want you to get the new Mobile Device Security cloud and hybrid builds document. This is NIST special publication 1800-4A. So go grab this PDF and add this to your uh, knowledge base. It's about 204 pages, but again, come through here and scan and find valuable information for BYOD, corporate owned personal devices, and uh, some best practices. So that's a document I want you to get.
Also, here's a new, very short document. Maybe you'll get this one first. This is from Palo Alto Networks. It's the Mobile Network Operators Use Case Handbook. And it's only about eight pages long, but it's brand new. And it's going to give you some quick ideas into some of the Palo Alto solutions, okay, for automating visibility, actionable insight, and understanding all of your network peering points. So that's from Palo Alto, the Mobile Network Operators Use Case Handbook. And then finally, this Enterprise Mobility Checklist for Secure Containerization. And we've talked about containerization in other parts of this live lesson training, but uh, as part of your Enterprise Mobility Management Strategy, EMM, look at different types of containerization options that you have. The pros and cons of virtualization, virtual separation, instancing, application layer, app wrapping, for example, virtual desktop, and web app solutions. So three documents I want you to add to your knowledge base and go through and spend some time reading through these, uh, especially this first one, the 1800-4A mobile device security from NIST.